All right, gang, we are back with part three, and uh, I was going to try and show you guys this uh, mag cover uh, before uh, before time ran out. Uh, of course, we have uh, the Sheik, who, honestly, when I saw that picture originally, originally, I thought it was Kevin Sullivan, but it was like, nope, the Sheik. And I was like, wow, okay. Hulk Hogan and Steve Ray. Uh, Steve Ray was uh, a big star in the promotion called the UWF, which uh, is not around anymore. Uh, but Steve Ray was quite a popular star until it was believed that uh, he was messing around with the owner's wife, and then he didn't become so popular anymore. <laughs> we got Batista, WWE Raw Magazine champion when he won at WrestleMania 21, his first uh, world title. Another WWE Raw Magazine with Ric Flair on the cover. Uh, it says right there, why Ric Flair's... I'll get it. There we go. Why Ric Flair's peers think he's the best ever. And, uh... Well, a lot of people say he's 16-time world's champion, and if you look at Wikipedia, it turns out he's been... Uh, he's held a world's championship like 24 times, but they were for smaller promotions, but that well, still counts. They only, but they only count the big ones. This is a magazine you don't want to look at without your th without the 3D glasses, and sadly, I don't have the 3D glasses with them anymore. But it's WrestleMania 3D, and uh, it makes your eyes hurt just looking inside. So I won't I won't put you guys through that kind of torture. Another classic WCW magazine with Sting and Vader uh, right before the uh, right before the big War Games show. Uh, I never got to see War Games. Of course, I never got to see Starcade either, so, you know. I mean, I did see my fair share of WCW uh, pay-per-views in 98, but Starcade never got that chance, which is kind of a shame. And uh, the big SmackDown's 5th anniversary special issue. Look who's out front, of course. Uh, you can't they me. <laughs> yeah, I just cannot stand John Cena. And oh, Lord, didn't didn't I just didn't I just show this one? Yeah, yes I did. Okay, I told you I like the Undertaker. Okay, and here's more proof. Classic WWF magazine when he was doing the uh, Ministry of Darkness stuff, and uh, that was some scary, scary stuff. But I was a big Ministry of Darkness fan. Corporate Ministry. I, th I thought that I thought that was one of their, the biggest idiotic ideas they had. And yes, here we are again with the Undertaker back when he beat uh, uh, Sid Vish, Psycho Sid at WrestleMania 13. <sighs> and here we are again. Oh. <laughs> uh, I told you, I'm an Undertaker fan. I think out of all the wrestling mags I have in here, The Undertaker graces more covers than of, ever, than of anybody else. And you're going to see that in this issue, or in this uh, video, in this issue. Uh, Kane and Paul Bearer, as you can see right there, back when Kane still had the mask going. And uh, I think this was uh, I think this was sometime after his uh, first appearance for the old uh, WWF magazine. Not quite the Attitude Era, but you know, a lot of people say they miss the Attitude Era, but I'm like... Well, they kind of bring it back, but then again, what good does it do? And, of course, we have Eugene on the cover of Raw Magazine, which I, I really find this kind of an insult that they bring in a, uh, a, a, a special, you know, they well, actually, it's Nick Dinsmore. He's a talented wrestler. Then they have him, uh, they, they give him this character of he's a special wrestler and it's it's insulting because you know they they always like to brag about how they love to do uh they love to participate in uh, stuff like special olympics and make a wish and all that and yet they 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 give a character like this to him and of course a lot of people say that Nick Densmore was not exactly the most charismatic wrestler and he didn't have much character so you got to do what you can with him and I'm thinking this is what you give him no that's terrible that's a bad idea uh yeah I think this yeah this is the uh I do believe this is the last WWE magazine I actually got because again like I said they started they started putting on 
if it wasn't John Cena, it was Triple H. If it wasn't Triple H, it was Randy Orton. If it wasn't Randy Orton, it was John Cena. <laughs> so, yeah, they, they pretty much had the same three or four guys gracing the, gracing the covers of WWE Magazine multiple times during the last two years of their run. And I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have minded going to get the uh, last issue, but weirdly and oddly enough, when I tried to go over there to find it at, at uh, Walmart right over there, it was gone. So I was like, wow. <laughs> And once again, Mick Foley graces the cover of WWF Magazine with gold dust. <laughs> I think those two could have made a great tag team. So, you know, they were both weird. <laughs> and uh, WrestleMania Ultimate Photo Collection Volume 1. Sadly, I never got Volume 2. I, I was never able to... To actually find it, I, I don't think they ever sold it here, which was which kind of sucked. And we're going way back in time once again, because look who's gracing the cover of wrestling's main event. It's Sting and the Ultimate Warrior. I don't know. What, what did you guys prefer? What, which era of Sting did you prefer? The uh, bleach blonde, multi-face painted, multi-colored state face paint Sting, or the Crow Sting, Joker-like Sting? And there's Lex Luger. <laughs> Again, every time, every, every time I watch a classic match of his, I think to myself, the guy looks like <laughs> looks like skin and bone. And of course, we have Shawn Michaels on the cover of this WWF magazine. Um, Shawn Michaels and his faithful, kind of ironic, because you know he might have been a he might have been a fan favorite in the fans' eyes, but. Um, a lot of people backstage said he was a real prima donna. So, <laughs> and of course we have the big lead up to WrestleMania 10, where it's uh, Bret Hart versus Yokozuna, Lex Luger versus Yokozuna. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you remember how that how that whole thing went down. And. Uh, we have, and there's another wrestling magazine featuring a guy that many people believe is a murderer too, Rey Mysterio. I don't believe that it, that he did that on purpose. I mean, you know, you, you, if you read the reports, you read that um, that uh, the guy who who took the six one nine from him, uh, it basically said Conan got in there, raised his head, and and. A lot of people said that might have been what did it. You know, it's like you don't lift a guy's head when he's, you know, falls back, takes a bad bump. So uh, we got the wrestler. We have uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Brock Lesnar, and Bill Goldberg. We know he'll be back first. Well, so far it's been Austin and Lesnar to WWE. Goldberg, he's kept his distance. And, of course, we have Stone Cold Steve Austin on the uh, cover of the WWF magazine. Uh, he, he graced a lot of covers, too, so... And we have uh, the Hall of Fame issue. Of course, this isn't, this isn't all about the Hall of Famers, but there are several uh, pages in here concerning the Hall of Famers, so that was pretty cool. And what many may consider to be probably the most brutal Hell in a Cell match ever between uh, Batista and Triple H, and I gotta say, that one was pretty, that one was pretty brutal. Uh, barbed wire, steel chair, the whole nine yards. It was, it was insane. Uh, best of 2006 issue. We got DX. We got John Cena, Randy Orton, Undertaker, Batista, Jeff Hardy, and their own version of the Slammies in there too. Weird awards they give them there, you know. And uh, this is one of the last WC WCW magazines they they did. Uh, has Kevin Nash on the cover. I don't think he hurt anything during the during the photo shoot. So at least I don't think he did. And uh, back when WWE was bringing back uh, East, the ECW One Night Stand pay-per-view, of course, I had to go out and pick up this issue. <sighs> I had to. I had to have it. I couldn't help it. I had to have it. <laughs> well, actually, it was given to me by a friend of mine. I almost stole it, though, but I was like, no, that's not my style. <laughs> and we have WWE The Year in Photos. Pretty interesting pictures in here. Um you know, we got the Miz with the Money in the Bank briefcase, and you know, it's pretty, pretty interesting stuff. It's pretty funny pictures in there too. And of course, this may bring back some memories back when Sting was starting off his crow-like phase. 
Oh man, I think a lot of people got on to him about that, and they just they just said, you know, I was like, man, you got to change it up a little bit, and he's like, okay, and he changed it up and made it look way cooler, so people aren't sitting there going like, Sting's being like the crow. All right, one more mag before I conclude this part, and we end it with Kane once again. Unfortunately, it's his mask behind a wall of flames. That kind of rhymes in a way. All right, gang. Well, I hope you come back for uh, the next part of this little roundup. And I will be back for part four, I think. I don't know. I've lost count. <laughs> but until then, as always, gang, stay strong and rock on. <laughs>